Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today, we're going to look at this paper, which is a write-up of a randomized, double-blind clinical trial looking at how resveratrol impacts markers of oxidative stress and SIRT1 activation in participants with type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes affects a large number of people, and associated with the high serum glucose levels are inflammation and elevated oxidative stress. Natural compounds with antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and glucose-lowering properties are therefore used in conjunction with therapies such as metformin. One of these compounds is resveratrol, which has been well studied, but also has had some controversial results. In this study, they conducted a randomized clinical trial with 97 diabetic older adult participants to evaluate the impact on oxidative stress markers and sirtuin-1 activation. There were three groups taking 1,000 milligrams or 500 milligrams of resveratrol or a placebo every day, with the measures of biomarkers, oxidative stress, and sirtuin-1 activation taking at baseline and after six months. The one gram resveratrol group saw a significant increase in antioxidant capacity, antioxidant gap, the percentage of participants without oxidative stress, and sirtuin-1 levels. The placebo group, meanwhile, saw an increase in lipoperoxides, isoprostanes, and C-reactive protein levels, as well as an increase in oxidative stress scores. And the conclusion is that one gram of resveratrol is more effective as an antioxidant than 500 milligrams. Some details on the trial process. The participants were aged between 60 and 74 and had been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, for which they were being treated with metformin and or glibenclamide. They had also had no clinical liver or kidney damage. All groups were given two capsules per day containing the correct amount of transresveratrol or placebo. I could find no further instructions on when the capsule should be taken. At the start of the trial, they measured BMI and blood pressure, which were the same across the groups in the initial measure as expected. And no group saw any significant changes. It's interesting that in other trials, resveratrol has been shown to reduce blood pressure in people with hypertension, but this was not seen in this study. They propose this may be because the resveratrol only works when people have high blood pressure as opposed to more normal. In a similar way, another study found that resveratrol lowered body fat in people with a BMI over 30. But again, this was not seen in this study. Here we are looking at the biomarkers in the blood. Triglycerides were significantly lowered in the 1000 milligram group. This is consistent with earlier studies, and they attribute this to the decreasing absorption of fats while encouraging fat burning and lowering lipogenesis. The 500 milligram group did not see the same decrease. Meanwhile, the CRP levels increased in the placebo group, though not the resveratrol groups. I did notice that glucose levels increased in both the resveratrol groups, though neither was significant. Obviously not something that is wanted in diabetes. However, the HbA1c showing long-term average glucose levels were essentially unchanged in all groups. In other studies, resveratrol has been shown to reduce blood glucose levels as well as HbA1c, though this is not consistent. One point they made is that this may be due to age, where people over 60 seem to have difficulty absorbing resveratrol. Looking at the oxidative stress markers, TAC and GAP are both significantly increased in the 1000 mg resveratrol group. TAC is the total antioxidant capacity which considers all the antioxidant capacity in the serum and body fluids and provides an integrated parameter. So an increased number shows better antioxidant capabilities. Meanwhile, from the paper, the gap is the antioxidant gap, which provides information on antioxidant activity in plasma apart from uric acid and albumin. So this would include vitamin E and C, plus other antioxidants such as resveratrol, I am not clear on why uric acid and albumin are excluded in this measure, but it does seem to point to higher antioxidant capabilities. Returning to the oxidative stress markers, the placebo group did see a significant increase in lipoperoxides and isoprostanes, both of which are oxidized fats and a sign of oxidative stress. There was also a decrease in superoxid dismutase and an increase in the oxidative stress status. It's not clear to me how to interpret these significant changes in the placebo group's markers.
Is this expected due to normal diabetic progression over a six-month period or not? Here is the result from the oxidative stress index. The significant changes are marked with an asterisk, and we can see that the resveratrol group saw reduction in oxidative stress, while the placebo group saw an increase. And finally, CERT1 activity. All groups saw an increase, but only in the one gram resveratrol group was this significant, changing from 1.5 to 3.1 nanograms per milliliter, which represents a 106% increase. This is consistent with the proposed mechanism of resveratrol where the increase in CERT1 impacts autophagy, mitophagy, mitochondrial biogenesis, and the expression of antioxidant enzymes. It's interesting that the trial did not see the fat and blood pressure reducing effects of resveratrol, which have been shown in other studies, but did see the antioxidant capability and increased CERT1 activation, both of which have also been reported in previous studies. It is dose-dependent, with most of the benefits being seen in the one gram per day group. This may be related to the comment that they had about reduced absorption for people over 60, needing a higher dose to be effective. This was in diabetic patients, but it's interesting to see the positive impact on oxidative stress and CERT1 activation that resveratrol has. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon.